Hi, that's a default power bank. 6000 mAh to outputs and even a flashlight. In this video we will look what's inside of it and how it works. Of course there are batteries and some electronics that control that batteries charging and discharging. This exact power bank has 3 lithium batteries and by pure accident they are the same color as my background. Obviously they are connected in parallel to increase the total capacity. So if one has a capacity of 2000 mAh, 3 of them in parallel gives 6000. An other aspect that's a cheap battery is manufactured in China with a nominal voltage of 3.6 volts and maximum of 4.2 volts. Minimum discharge voltage of such batteries is usually 3 volts. So as you can know, lithium batteries are extremely important in mobile devices. And for those of you who are not familiar with them at all and don't know what are those 3.6, 4.2 volts numbers mean, here is a crash course. Battery operates at its nominal voltage rating almost all time of its discharge cycle. During discharging, nominal voltage decreases just slightly. But here, when battery almost out of power, voltage starts decreasing rapidly. That means battery has only small amount of energy left in it and needs to be recharged. But why 3 volts is the limit? Actually, 3 volts is just safety recommendation from manufacturers. You can go lower than that, but deep discharging decreases battery capacity over time and is not recommended. Also, as you can see, a decrease in voltage level from 3 to 2 volts corresponds only to 5% of the state of charge. That means that at the point of 3 volts, battery is almost empty and it makes no sense to discharge it deeper. However, it's actually up to you whether you want your device to last longer for 30 minutes and use this extra 5% speeding up the battery degradation process or you want to extend the battery life, but the device will work a little less time on one charge. Personally, I would recommend staying above 3 volts. Now let's see what the upper limit means. Let's assume we are charging the battery. At the beginning, voltage will rise from 3 volts to 3.5 volts pretty fast, because it corresponds to only 5% state of charge. After that, again, voltage will be rising slowly and battery will be charging by its nominal current. The charging process lasts until the battery reaches 4.2 volts, and that's a specified maximum battery voltage. It's not recommended to overcharge lithium batteries even for a small amount. Usually plus minus 50 mV tolerance is used, cause overcharging leads to a reduced lifetime and causes battery degradation, and what is even more dangerous, it can cause a battery failure or explosion. So now you know a little bit about lithium batteries, and if you want more info about charging them, write it in the comments. Coming back to power bank. Batteries are welded together with a metal strip and soldered with the wire to the main board. At one side of the battery there is an insulation plastic piece to ensure that battery terminals do not touch the PCB. Now let's look at the PCB that controls batteries charging and discharging. In reality it's pretty simple. The brain of the board is this chip. And we get lucky because in its datasheet we can find the schematic of all power bank. At this point don't worry if you don't understand it. It's always like that when you see the schematic for the first time. Even experienced engineers sometimes struggle and need time to figure out what is happening. So let's do it step by step. Here is the main control chip, the brain as I said. Here is the input for charging power bank, the output for connecting devices you want to charge, and the battery connection points. And let's look where are they on the PCB. The brain, input, USB outputs and battery connection points. Other main parts of this circuit is the battery state of charge indication, so that's basically these four LEDs that are controlled by the brain. The flashlight LED, also controlled by the brain. All these parts here are the battery protection circuit that is built on a DW01 chip and two transistors. Datasheet of it also can be easily found, and here it is. Basically what it does is monitoring battery's max charging current, maximum and minimum voltage ratings, and in case of over voltage, over current or voltage level lower than 3 volts, it disconnects batteries with the use of these two transistors that are connected in series with the batteries. So yeah, just simple protection circuit. And again, here are these components at the PCB. Indication LEDs, flashlight and flashlight button to turn it on, and protection circuit. On the PCB they use different transistors than in schematic, so on the PCB transistors have only 6 pins, but they do the same job. Other extremely important part of the power bank circuit, I would say the muscles, is the boost converter. Here it is built on a several components, and on the PCB it looks like this. Here is an inductor, two diodes connected in parallel, the transistor, yeah, that's a transistor in a SO8 package, yeah, not all transistors have three pins, and some resistors and capacitors to provide feedback and smooth the voltage. 
You probably know from previous videos that this big boy is electrolytic capacitor and these smaller ones are ceramic. But why do we need boost converter at all? As I said, battery's voltage can vary from 3V to a 4.2V, but the USB standard is 5V. Therefore, to increase voltage level to 5V, we need to boost it with the boost converter. In that way, battery's unstable voltage is converted to a stable 5V. And obviously, conversion is controlled by the brain using pulse width modulation signal that is applied to a transistor. Brain turns it on and off with a specific frequency and duty cycle. And again, if you want more info about DC-DC converters and their working principle, write it in the comments. Also, there are situations where output and input are connected directly. Just think about it. If you use USB charger connected to the power bank here, that can provide 5 volts and you need the same 5 volts at the output, why just not connect them directly? And that is exactly what they did in this power bank. They put it a switch Q1, here it is, which connects input with the output. So basically it connects USB 5V to a USB 5V, and there is no need to discharge batteries or use a boost converter. That's a smart solution. And here is the switches on the PCB. They used two bipolar transistors in parallel. And the last but very important thing is how batteries are charged. And again, brain controls everything. It has inbuilt switch inside that regulate current that flows through the batteries. And here it is. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope it was useful. Bye.